I keep hearing Michigan. I hear it from again the Clinton. Again. I right. hear it from yeah. the, the the Clinton campaign off sort of on background. I hear it from the Trump campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm now hearing it from the RNC. Are you guys hearing it on the ground too? What gives? I, I, I am, honestly. I, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and predict, yes, that that's definitely, the state's definitely going to go for Trump, but Democrats even will privately acknowledge that it is a state that is in many ways tailor-made uh, yep. for Donald Trump. And I think the question really is, did Trump capitalize on that? I'm not sure that they did this early enough to be able to Maybe actually they didn't. pull it and, off. And, you know, that's, Harold Ford was also saying the other day, he was worried about Michigan, but the question is, did they wait too long well, to that's, get in Well, that there? is the question, because you didn't hear about Michigan. You heard about Michigan a lot in the beginning, right? The Rust Belt state strategy. This was sort of like the centerpiece of that. It was going to be the focus of it. And then he, he needed to focus on Florida and Ohio and get into all these places where he was behind. Um, and now you're hearing what you're hearing from the campaign is Michigan. I know we talked a little bit about Pennsylvania. I wanted to get a question into Sean about that because that is, as you talk about, sort of the perennial. It's thing always that old I, school. Exactly. The only thing yeah. about Pennsylvania that makes it interesting Vaxing. no early voting. Right. So if yeah. there is momentum, if it keeps moving that way, in Pennsylvania more than a lot of these other states like Nevada, Florida, North Carolina, you know, that's the potential that's to the make potential maybe for the shock. But, it's, but it's I just don't believe it. It's such a deficit it. there though. I mean, it's Especially such a deficit in the Philly in the suburbs, suburbs, right? Right. Melania Trump was there yesterday. Um, and you know, <laughs> a lot of conversation about it because she's somebody who pulls a lot of attention, but can somebody can putting Melania Trump out on the trail in Chester County where she right. was really sort of relate can she relate to those suburban women who live there? I don't know. I, mean, I think that's, that's a question. Uh, let's get some more road warrior warriors in here. Joining us now, <laughs> NBC News senior White House correspondent Chris Jansing, who's just outside Atlanta, and in Pittsburgh, NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker, who is covering the Clinton campaign. Kristen, we'll so start you, with you. So you guys are in the perfect state, mm -hmm. I, I think, because I don't <laughs> think there's any way. And of course, I'm going to eat these words oh, on, yeah. on Wednesday. Morning. I don't think there's any way unless there's a huge wave. That Hillary Clinton wins Georgia or that Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania, and yet both campaigns think there's a shot. Well, you're feeling that well, on the ground here, Joe, and like that's why Secretary Clinton. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, obviously, she's keeping it close here. Uh, and this is the last day, by the way, of early voting. And early voting is up 6%. Take a look at our latest NBC poll. It's, it's a one-point race. But what's interesting is, obviously, always when you go beneath those numbers and you see that the African-American vote here is 29%. So if there was a, a state that was going to swing that favored her, a traditionally red state, you got to look at the African-American vote. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's favoring Clinton 91 to 6%. Here's the problem for her, and that is is that the vote is down from 2012 and 2008. They always knew it would be because she is not Barack Obama. Having said that, they did that final push with souls to the polls. But again, note that 40% of people here have already voted. There is no more souls to the polls because there is no voting, early voting after today. It's all about Tuesday. So it is going to be about the ground game here. So far at the beginning of this last final week, a million and a half votes had been cast. That is up 28% over 2008, up 32% over 2012. So you don't have to be a pollster or a mathematician to understand that if Hillary Clinton is going to defy the odds and surprise you, Joe, it's going to be because they've made this final push with the African-American vote. And, and Kristen, in Pennsylvania, obviously, uh, the Trump people still think they can win. And despite skeptics like myself, you have the entire Clinton operation, and including Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, closing out their campaign in the Keystone State. Absolutely. Next Monday, Joe, you're going to see that big unity rally with Secretary Clinton and President Obama and the First Lady and former President Bill Clinton. It underscores how important this state is. The fact that the Clinton campaign wants to defend it, feeling perhaps a little bit jittery as they're seeing these polls getting tighter. And just to follow up on what all you guys are saying, they want to solidify the support they already have, the path to 270. She's not focused on at this point in the campaign trying to win over new contracts. She's got to hold her ground in states like Pennsylvania, where the polls are getting tighter. And she is going to Michigan later today, as you're all talking about. That's raising some eyebrows. And as I've been saying, they are still have that memory of that big upset during the primary when right. Bernie Sanders came back and won Michigan. The reason why you have a lot of work.
working class voters there who they think fit right into Donald Trump's message and who could potentially swing for Donald Trump. Take a look at the polls, though, to see why there is some trepidation within the campaign. Secretary Clinton still has a lead here in Pennsylvania, but it's five points according to one poll, four points in another poll. It goes down to two points in yet another poll. She's added an event in New Hampshire over the weekend, guys, and that is because it's all tied up in New Hampshire. Take a look at this latest poll. This is Suffolk University. 42% for Secretary Clinton, 42% for Donald Trump. So she's really going back to basics. She's going to be talking about the economy here today, trying to energize women voters. She's also pulling in a lot of big names, not only top surrogates from the political world, but from the entertainment world as well. She's going to be joined by Jay-Z later tonight wow. in Ohio. Guys, so, back to you. Uh, Casey, leaving no stone unturned. <laughs> Just leaving no stone unturned. Thank you, Chris, and greatly appreciate it. Thank, uh, you, thank Chris. you, Chris. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.